I want John Boehner to be speaker. I think he's done a good job under incredibly difficult circumstances and attempts to remove the speaker um, and a motion to vacate the chair, in my opinion, are counterproductive and I won't participate in it. Congressman Peter Roskam of Illinois telling C-SPAN's Washington Journal that even though he pushes back on House leadership from time to time, he will not participate in ousting the current speaker, John Boehner. Now, efforts by conservative Republicans to remove Speaker Boehner, they could come to the House floor again in the coming weeks. But it appears the speaker is secure for now as more Republicans with the powerful committee posts are standing behind him. Of course, this all comes ahead of a budget deadline where funding for plan Planned Parenthood could figure in perhaps another government shutdown. So what is going to happen? For more on this story from Newsmax Washington, it's Newsmax Chief Washington Correspondent John Gizzi. And Skyping in from just across the river at CNSNews.com, the editor-in-chief of CNSNews.com, Terry Jeffrey. Terry, let me begin with you. We've heard rumors, we've seen reports that Boehner may step down of his own uh, volition following the visit of the Pope. Do you believe those rumors turned reports to be any, in any way accurate? No, I don't think John Boehner's going to step down. I think that he wants to at least yeah. serve out this term as speaker, so I don't think you're going to see that happen. Mm. John Gizzi, you're getting information up to the minute on all of this. I'm just kind of curious. Is, is what, what we've heard is, again, his supporters say, look, just let him get through the visit of the Pope. But instead of getting ready to clear the decks, is it as Terry implies that the Boehner forces are getting ready for ways to try and avoid a, a floor fight or at least defeat any resolution about, uh, about the chair on the House floor? Well, I find it most poignant that I'm here with Terry. When he was editor of Human Events and I worked for him, we uncovered a true and very threatening coup by Republican House members against a Republican Speaker of the House named Newt Gingrich. That was 16 years ago, and it was a significant story. The Speaker managed to quell it and put dissenters at ease. I'm sure Terry remembers it. Today, one cannot find the infantrymen along with Congressman Mark Meadows. Many complain about the speaker, but many more are very reluctant to go for a motion to vacate the chair. That could lead to the election of Nancy Pelosi as speaker. It could lead to some uh, unforeseen consequences, but it wouldn't happen right away. The Speaker of the House has a list that includes who is speaker pro tem, and wields the gavel if he is gone right away. So there'd be a stopgap speaker, there'd be another election, and this was last done in the 19th century. I don't think members are very willing to do it, particularly as the specter of a government shutdown hovers over official Washington right now. And I want to get to that whole concept of the shutdown in just a second. But again, Terry, uh, John is saying folks are reluctant to do this, and it squares with, with what you're telling me as well. Now, Jay, I don't think there's anybody who understands the inside politics of Capitol Hill better than John Gizzi. And that story you just alluded to, that was John's story. It was a great story. It was about an incipient coup against Newt Gingrich, which, as John pointed out, did not come to fruition. But it was in the works, as John report, reported back then. I, I think, I, you know, ironically, I think when you look back at it historically, Newt ended up being a more effective speaker than John Boehner is. And I think the real issue is not whether John Boehner is going to be removed. I agree with John. I doubt he will be. But why he has been so cowardly in taking on President Barack Obama on an issue so fundamental as whether taxpayers should give $500 million or more yeah. to a group that openly admits it kills more than 300,000 babies a year. The bottom line is this, J.D., if Planned Parenthood gets a penny of your or my or any other American's tax money on October 1st, it's because John Boehner and the Republican House of Representatives that he leads agreed to give our tax money to a group that kills more than 300,000 babies a year. That's the bottom line. And people should be upset about that. And, it, and it's understandable that members will talk about removing him 
Because quite frankly, if you can't fight on something like that, you are not a leader at all. Terry Jeffrey, we appreciate your perspective. John Gizzy, we are reminded of your great reporting from yesteryear when you had wind of something I didn't even know about when I was a member of the House. All the uh, vaccines dealing with Newt Gingrich. We'll keep our eyes on John Boehner in the days ahead. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. Now, uh, we've been talking about Wednesday night's Republican presidential debates. You continue to tell us how you reacted to the candidates who you think won. Here are some up-to-date poll numbers. Donald Trump remains in the lead, but that lead's eroding. It's about 47%. Carly Fiorina picking up steam just under 24%. You can vote. Still have time at NewsmaxPolls.com.